This month we're going to look at the octopus antenna and I'm going to show you a few tips that will help you in setting it up. It's perfect for portable operation. You know, it's similar to a buddy pole antenna, except the octopus is actually four dipole antennas. Two hamsticks make up each band, and you can choose whatever four bands you want. I chose 75, 40, 20, and 10 meters. And I put a little colored heat shrink tubing on each pair to help me identify them a little quicker. We begin by installing all of the whips as long as possible. This should put us resonant somewhere right below the target band. And we need to adjust them so that they're both the same length on each band. Then install all of the whips into the octopus antenna mount, making sure that whips on close by frequencies are not next to each other to reduce the chance of interaction. It's going to be easiest to tune this antenna with an antenna analyzer. That'll save you a lot of time. You should install all the hamsticks before tuning, and then you're going to tune each band individually, beginning with the lowest band. As we tune each band, we want to make sure that the elements on that band remain the same length with each other. A couple of notes before we go on. Shortening the antenna will cause a dip in the SWR, to increase in frequency. So lengthening the antennas will drop the frequency. Hike the above ground will have some effect. When you raise the antenna, the frequency that the VSWR dip occurs at may shift upward. This has the biggest effect on frequencies 14 MHz and below. Like half-wave dipole antennas, the hamstick dipoles are somewhat directional. The radiation pattern is broadside with nulls on either end. So when you install the antenna, you might consider which bands are pointing in which directions. Of course, you can always rotate it to change the pattern. Being shorter antennas, hamstick antennas are somewhat bandwidth limited. This is a bigger effect on 40 and 80 meters. You'll notice that the dips in VSWR are narrow compared to the higher frequency bands where the hamstick may cover most of the band consider that and choose the range in each band that you prefer. A tuner is very handy when using this type of antenna. As I mentioned earlier, you'll probably want to use an antenna analyzer if you've got one to adjust this. My preferred antenna analyzer for this, anyway, is the MFJ225. Because of that nice graphics display that shows you the VSWR plot there, and it's constantly updating that display. You don't have to push a button to get a new reading each time. That makes it pretty nice to see where your pass pin is or, you know, where the dip in VSWR is. Now, that's an important thing to know, uh, particularly when you're tuning for a particular part of the band. Let's look at a couple of dips here on some plots. The plot on the left shows you a good sharp dip. That's what you'd want to see when adjusting these. The one on the right, although it's got a broader bandwidth there, you can see the VSWR doesn't dip nearly as much. So you're looking for the one on the left. Now, if for some reason, and you know, these hamsticks can all be tuned slightly different, if you've got them both adjusted for the same length, you should see the one on the left. If by some chance you don't, then try adjusting one of the hamsticks a little bit and see what happens. See if it improves that pattern or gives you a sharper and deeper null. I raise the antenna up to the height that I plan to operate it, which is around 30 feet. Starting with the 80 meter band here on the analyzer, we see that with the arms extended all the way, 3.695, I would really like to have it a little higher than that, up around 3.8 megahertz or 3,800. Got a ways to go. That's given me an SWR of 9.99 to 1 there. So we're going to have to shorten these elements a little and that will increase the frequency of the dip in the VSWR. Now, here's a tip that may save you a little time. Get your calculator out or a piece of paper and a pencil and do some ciphering. I made my first adjustment by moving both of the whips on the 80 meter elements one inch shorter. I ended up at 37, 19 kilohertz. 
If I subtract the $36.95 we were to start with, that gives me 24. So roughly, I get a 24 kilohertz change by moving the antenna elements one inch. That'll make it a little bit easier to do some calculations and see where I really need to be. I would like to go to 3800, so I'll subtract. For right now, we're at 3695. Tells me 105. If I divide that by the 24, that says I need to go 4.375 inches. Well, let's just do a check first. Let's move the elements in a total of three inches. So I'm going to move them in two more inches and see what happens. Now, I thought about it for a few moments, and the best way I could come up with to make sure I did both elements the same amount was to take a ruler and a piece of tape, mark the amount that I wanted to change, and hold it up, and leave the piece of tape on the element. Then I'd make my adjustment on this element, and then move to the opposite side and do the same thing. When I shortened both elements by 3 inches, it moved the dip up to 3 point. 764. Before I did anything else, I thought I'd do a little experiment. Lower the antenna back down to about 12 feet off the ground and see if it had any effect. And you can see that it did drop the frequency back down. So height does have an effect here for sure on 80 meters. Going for the full 5 inches I calculated, I subtracted 2 more inches and I'm at 3808. That's right about where I wanted to be. The 40 meter band proved to be a little more of a challenge. With the antennas lowered down to 12 feet off the ground, I measured 6857 with the 40 meter whips all the way extended. I shortened them by four inches each, and that moved me up to 7057. I did another adjustment. I shortened them by two more inches. That got me to 7159. And a little bit more got me to 7170. About 9 sixteenths of an inch more got me to 7190. And then I raised the antenna back in the air and it put me right at 7200. And that's where I wanted to be. The dip on 40 meters wasn't as deep as I would like to see. So I'll probably go back and adjust just one of the elements a little bit and see if I can improve that some. I used my same method of calculating to determine how far I should move each time. While I was at it, I thought, mm, maybe I'll go take a look at 80 meters now and see if adjusting the 40 meter band had any effect on it. I did, and uh, no, I can't see that it had any effect on it at all. So that's good. I used my same method on the 20 meter band. I managed to get a good nice dip there at 14,193. The only band left now was 10 meters. Using the same procedure, I managed to get it at 29030, which is just about where I wanted it. Overall, I would say you can do this. If you use the tips that I showed you there, you will save yourself a lot of time. Start with the antenna down low. Make your adjustments on each band, one at a time, to a little lower frequency than you really want. Then raise your antenna up and see where you are. Now I'm looking forward to getting on the air with the octopus and making a few contacts.